celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Golf, Volkswagen has significantly updated this 8th generation design, most significantly inside. As one former Volkswagen Group chairman once pointed out, the biggest mistake any Volkswagen Golf can make is to stop being a Golf. That's not happened here, and loyal Golf owners will find lots to like. In the family hatchback segment, there's nothing quite like the solid, reassuring feel of a Golf, although, of course, uh, its drivetrain engineering is almost identical to what you'll find in the three other VW Group products in this segment, which, uh, like the model that we're trying right here, have also recently been improved, the Seat Leon, the Skoda Octavia, and, of course, the Audi A3 Sportback. Not much of that has changed with this update, uh, particularly at the affordable end of the range, which which ditches the old one litre three cylinder unit and is now based around 1.5 litre four cylinder petrol power. Though Volkswagen doggedly continues to offer 115 PS manual and 150 PS auto versions of the two litre TDI diesel for those unconvinced by the idea of the pricey PHEV powertrain that we'll get to in a moment. The base 1.5 litre petrol unit also comes in 115 and 150 PS forms, although only with six-speed manual transmission. The seven-speed DSG auto is reserved for the ETSI mild hybrid 48 volt 150 PS model we're trying here. You might not want to stretch to that because neither performance, uh, 62 miles an hour in 9.9 seconds, nor economy are vastly different from what you'll get with the conventional TSI model. To really get frugality, you have to pay a lot more for the PHEV drivetrain that we referenced earlier, uh, which has been massively improved as part of this update. Uh, the power plant offered as before with the e-hybrid and GTE models now gets a larger 1.5 litre engine up from 1.4 and a much bigger 19.7 kilowatt hour battery up from 13 kilowatt hours before, which means a much longer EV driving range of up to 89 miles. The e-hybrid still puts out 204 PS, but the GTE now offers 272 PS. Otherwise, things are much as before, and that means that unless you stretch to a Golf with at least 150 PS, uh, it'll come without the multi-link rear suspension setup that a family hatchback of this class and price really ought to have. If you're bothered by the slightly brittle ride that that'll create with lower order golfs over poorer surfaces, uh, then we'd suggest that an alternative to getting the more highly tuned engine might be to option in the extra cost dynamic chassis control DCC adaptive damping system, which works with a driver profile driving mode system offering eco, comfort, sport and individual settings. As usual with the Golf, there's crisp, accurate steering with excellent refinement. There aren't too many visual differences with the Mark 8.5 era Golf. As before, there's a choice of hatch and estate body styles. Uh, where you'd really notice that this is an updated version of the 8th generation Golf is here at the front, where there are fresh illuminating signatures in the new look angular LED headlamps and smarter bumpers, plus an illuminated VW badge on the nose. The main midlife changes to this eighth generation model though lie inside. So let's take a look. There are lots of detailed differences here, but the main one you'll spot immediately if you've owned or regularly used an original version of this Mark 8 Golf, this much more sophisticated and significantly larger 12.9 inch central infotainment screen up from 10 inches in size before. Uh, Volkswagen's also listened to the various ergonomic criticisms made by people like us at this model's original launch. So the steering wheel's different too, now restored with proper buttons instead of the pre facelift model's fiddly touch sensitive ones. The awful touch slider below the infotainment screen has been retained, but it's now more responsive and at last is backlit for easier night use. Beyond the central screen, everything else you'll need to know lies on this 10.25 inch digital cockpit pro instrument screen, uh, the usual clearly formatted Volkswagen affair, rather than the cluttered digit fest uh, so many Far Eastern makers now serve up. With the right steering wheel view button selected, it remains capable of showing full screen mapping, surprisingly still quite unusual in this class. Let's take a seat in the rear. 
Nothing's changed back here, of course. So as before, a couple of six foot adults could be accommodated reasonably, uh, providing front seat occupants don't slide their seats fully back. Let's finish this segment by taking a look in the boot, uh, the catch for which is, as usual, activated by pushing this central tailgate badge. Uh, the estate version of this model has one of the biggest boots in the class, 611 litres, but this relatively meagre 381 litre space uh, provided by the hatch is one of the smaller cargo areas in the class. It gets worse if you choose one of the plug-in hybrid Golfs. Uh, their boot capacity falls to just 273 litres, which is almost super mini sized. On a conventionally engine model, pushing forward the conventional 60 40 split rear bench frees up. 1,237 litres across a load area, which will be virtually flat if you have the boot floor in its upper position. It's up to 1,642 litres if you load up to the roof liner in the estate version. Let's get to the WLTP rated efficiency stats and start with the manual petrol models. The base 1.5 litre TSI 115 PS unit manages up to 52.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 123 grams per kilometre of CO2. Alternatively, it's 51 miles per gallon and 126 grams per kilometer for the 150 PS version. What about the autos? Well, this ETSI 150 PS model's mild hybrid 48 volt electrical system boosts the returns only slightly to 53.1 mpg and 121 grams per kilometer. If you want to be more economical than that, you'll need either a diesel or a plug-in hybrid. Uh, the two liter TDI manual diesel manages 63.5 mpg and 117 grams per kilometer in 115 PS manual form or 60.5 mpg and 122 grams per kilometer in 150 PS automatic guise. In theory, you will do far better, of course, with the petrol plug-in hybrids. And now, as we told you earlier on in our driving section, the larger 19.7 kilowatt hour battery used with those variants now takes the e-hybrid and the GTE models up to 62 miles on EV power, contributing to a total range of about 620 miles. So you really could use a PHEV Golf much like an EV for short commuting duties. The official figures are scarcely believable and need to be taken with a very large pinch of salt up to 993.3 mpg and 6 grams per kilometer for the e-hybrid and 796.3 miles per gallon and 8 grams per kilometer for the GTE. We like the improvements made to this 8th generation Golf so much that we now think you might even feel that this Volkswagen is a better home for your money than a pricier premium badged model of this sort, the Audi A3 that shares nearly all this car's engineering for example. Now that the annoying infotainment glitches of the original version of the Mark 8 design have been dealt with, there's lots to like here from a car that feels engineered to a depth that most rivals can't match. Certainly the safety kit, the media features and the autonomous driving tech are all cutting edge. All of which means that this is still, as a Golf always should be, a benchmark in the segment. A car that must feature highly on any family hatch buyer's shopping list. In short, this is still a Golf with all the model line heritage, the depth of engineering and the inherent quality that this badge has come to represent.